now I would like to introduce some guests that we've all been watching on Netflix over the last few years. Uh, from Marco Polo, Lorenzo McKelmey. And Michelle Yeoh. From our grateful Kimmy Schmidt, Titus Burgess. From Orange is the New Black, Kate Mulgrew. And Mia Galeria. And from Marvel's Daredevil, the Devil of Hell's Kitchen himself, Charlie Cox. I was trying to try to leap in, actually from the ceiling. Just walking in, unbelievable. Uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, before we get started, let's take a quick look at some of the series returning to Netflix. Okay, heck of a lineup in front of me. Uh, we're going to start with Orange is the New Black. And, uh, and Leah, we're going to start with you, actually. Okay. Uh, because Orange is the New Black was one of the very first Netflix original series. What was it like for you to be to be one of the first? And have you seen audience response change the show over time as we're about to go into season four? Um, what was it like to be the first? That's an mm. interesting. I look over at Kate because uh, you know I live by Kate Mulgrew. By the way. <laughs> I've always followed the rules of Kate Mulgrew. Um, it was it was interesting because um, first of all, no one had ever really seen anything like it. All of the episodes dropping at the same time and. Uh, watching it, it, it was interesting because when they came out on Thursday, um, uh, not even 24 hours later, I came out of my apartment to do something at the hardware store on the corner of the street, mm -hmm. and uh, a woman came running up to me from the hardware store, screaming, "Big boo, big boo! Would you, <laughs> would you sign my screwdriver?" And yeah, and it was like it hadn't even been on for it was like less than 48 hours. Wow. And but but that I think is a result of people binge watching. You know, they just sit down and watch like that again and again and again. So uh, yeah, that I think was amazing. I've never experienced anything like that. Okay, same for you. Yeah. Uh, no screwdrivers to be signed, I guess. Sorry? Have you signed any screwdrivers? <laughs> no, I had nothing to do with the screwdriver. <laughs> okay. Red had nothing to do with the screwdriver. <laughs> I, I, actually, I'm, I'm thinking along another line, which is that I have found the, the advent of this, Netflix, I should say, yeah. both civilized and unorthodox at, at, at the same time. And I, I, to find ourselves in the vanguard of this unexpected pony was uh, really thrilling. And for me, uh, a new day, because I'm used to broadcast television, 18-hour mm -hmm. uh, days, 26 order, do you know, with a hiatus of two minutes. <laughs> and uh, we have six months off, six months on. It works to the artist's advantage, it works to the brass advantage, it works to the creative process. It's altogether a brand new and very exciting day in television. Fantastic. And, and, uh, and Charlie, you've been traveling around the world recently, because Daredevil Season 2 just launched. Um, what's it like working? Because Netflix is a global network, it launches everywhere at once. Uh, and what's your reaction been like on your travels? Have you been having people rushing up to you asking you to sign power tools? <laughs> yeah, I haven't signed any power tools either. <laughs> Although that was me getting the, the, the <laughs> screwdriver signed. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's kind of, I guess it's kind of hard to compute really because you, until you, I don't know how you kind of take in that kind of information. I mean, the, it, it's, it's odd to think that. If you are on, let's say, a very popular network show and you're being watched by 20 plus million viewers a week in America, um, and then you consider the idea that your show is released on Netflix, all episodes overnight, and it's available to 75 million plus people, it's that kind of blows your mind a little bit. So, and you get, you know, I've, I've had, you know, going, I've been traveling in the Far East with the show and, and you know, going to Singapore and Hong Kong and Japan and those places. And, and uh, seeing the response and the excitement for this show, which is matched in America and in the UK and you know, hopefully here in Paris and France, so it's pretty wild. Who's the most fervent? Uh, the Japanese are pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they're <laughs> um, Michelle, unlike traditional networks, Netflix launches new series around the world at the same time. Is that significant? Oh, absolutely. I think uh, as an artist, uh, you know, to have your movie or your series seen simultaneously 
in 200 other countries at the same time is very gratifying because otherwise you never know when when your movie is ever going to get out to a smaller country and as an audience that's what you want you want to be on the same page as everybody else you don't want to be the one that's left out waiting another six months before the series or the movie comes yeah. to you yeah. so it has made a tremendous impact and it's a great liberation you know a great sense of freedom because mm. you can choose you can decide it's in your remote control <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and uh, Lorenzo the you actually started working on Marco Polo before Netflix had even launched in Italy uh, so what's it been like watching your friends and your family discover the show well, actually, I have to say, <clears throat> not knowing Netflix uh, as an Italian, uh, I, I was like, I, I did the audition, and then they told me, uh, is it, anyway, the network is Netflix, and I was like, okay, cool, where is it? On the web. <laughs> oh, crap, well, it's going to be that. <laughs> and then we're my friends, my friends are the same. Oh, come on, no, you should go on TV. And then I went to LA in this huge office, Netflix office, and yeah. it was just like few people. Because, you know, you don't need too many people for that. Now they are huge, but I was there now. Is this guy serious? That's why maybe you're picking an Italian who cannot speak English for this show. <laughs> they're like, this. Uh, what can I say? I mean, now is the future. There is nothing you can say about that. Personally, my opinion and my friend's opinion, uh, I'm, I'm born in 1990, which means that I've been brainwashed by commercials for most of my time in this world. And I would say that the <clears throat> The Netflix doesn't have any commercials, it's a big step. <laughs> and I totally agree with this philosophy and I'm so happy now. Absolutely. Uh, and Titus, um, you talked in the past about Netflix being synonymous with diversity. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, if you watch any number of these shows, there's all sorts of races and genders and different sexual orientations uh, that are represented on the show. Be on the network, and uh, it's nice to see a network uh, not so much call attention to what exists on Earth, but rather just show what exists on Earth. Mm. And it's mm. nice to work for a network uh, that actually sees you and sees you uh, as a, uh, a valuable commodity. And you know, look now, there's a man. There's a man sitting right behind you. How valuable? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, always got to be the black man. It's right? always good. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll hear what I said. Yes. Uh, it's nice to work for a network that, that sees you and, and, and values you and um, doesn't treat you like a gimmick, but rather, uh, you know, like a normal human being that you came to the world being. So, bravo to you. Now. Not only honoring it, but investigating it. Investigating For the first time, in a very, very insightful and provocative Absolutely. Way. Don't you think? I do think. I feel that strongly about our show, don't you? Absolutely. Nobody's made fun of. It's not that we're exalted. Mm -hmm. No one's diminished. Yeah. It's a true exploration of where we are in the world. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Has Netflix changed the way you watch TV? Do any of you binge watch? Charlie, oh, yes. Yes. I didn't watch his show. Yeah. I didn't watch his show. Oh, I, I burned through it. <laughs> and I burned through Orange is the New Black. That's it's, in here. It, it's such a, it, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Have, uh, have any of you had viewing parties where people come around? Oh, yeah. Not to watch your own show, obviously. Oh, well, no, to watch my own show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely to watch my own show. Why do we then? What is that in human nature? What is that? The, I don't know. It's an insatiable desire to consume. We're talking about watching right now, right? How many binge? Has it, does everybody binge in the audience? Be yeah, honest. Yeah. How many binge? Yeah, come on, oh, right? Yeah. Yeah. The binges. Yeah. I mean, if it's a good writing, who wants to wait a whole week to find out what happens? Yeah. You know? It's like love, isn't it? <laughs> I watch my TV like I eat my chicken. Yeah, I was just saying, I think more about food. Yeah, it's like food for me. <laughs> You know, sorry for me, you know, being the fat chick up here, but uh, you're not alone, you know, <laughs> right? So I'm, I'm not very good at saying no to anything. Are we going to go from binging <laughs> to food? Are we going to go from excellence and food? Um, well, that's where that's where the idea came from, didn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Um, and Charlie, season two of Daredevil has just uh, obviously it's been on Netflix now. I, I, I remember talking to you once before about. It's not binge watching necessarily, but whether you you read all the scripts at the same time, whether you know where your characters are going, do you? Yeah, I don't. You know, I'm actually I'm kind of still trying to figure that out, really. Um, I 
have chosen on both, you know, before we start shooting, the writers, the showrunner has, a, has, a, has a, what they call a Bible. Mm -hmm. And so they have a good sense of uh, the whole 30 hours and the character journeys and arcs, etc. I have chosen up until now to not read that. Um, and I, I read the scripts as they are presented to me as, we sh as we're shooting. Because I, like I like to experience the story as the viewer would experience the story. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I can't help but feel that might inform... If I read in a Bible that so-and-so character is killed in episode 10, mm -hmm. let's say, uh, and it's just like a kind of a, a line in a, par in a small paragraph, the impact that that has on me will be diminished. Whereas if I read it in the script over, over after over 56 pages and it's the final of episode, moment of episode 10 or whatever, it, 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 it infects you emotionally differently. And I think that I want to know that when I go into filming it, into filming the show. I mean, whether that would make any difference in performance, I have no idea, but I just, I prefer to have a sense of how it's going to be received by an audience when, I'm, when we're filming, so. Okay. Um, what, what I love, what we talk a lot about with Netflix, which I think is really interesting, and what, what the thing I love the most about them is that because, of course, these, these episodes are released uh, at the same time, and, and therefore you're not, as it's not on appointment, it's not by appointment television, you don't have to spend any time catching people up. So you, you don't waste any time at the beginning of an episode uh, reminding people what happened. And also, uh, you don't have any of these gimmicky kind of um, uh, cliffhangers. Yeah. Because if you, you, know, you end an episode with this big cliffhanger and it doesn't work because people just go, oh, click, and <laughs> you know, they find out what, what happened, so. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk now about what we can expect from the upcoming returning originals. Uh, Kate and Leah, let's start with you. Uh, what can you expect from season four of Orange is the New Black? <laughs> Are we allowed to speak? <laughs> A little bit. What about that thing I had to sign? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, they always change it up for us uh, at Orange. I mean, um, we've learned to go with our writers because they're smart and they're funny and possibly the best writers in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. In fact, I'll mud wrestle anybody that says that they're not. <laughs> um, and Gen G has a nose for what's going on. So when they approached us and told us that season four was going to be done entirely with puppets, <laughs> nobody fought. We what, just. I got her. I got you. I'm so glad. Yeah, in fact, it's uh, the whole season is done with marionettes. I know that's yeah. weird, but, you know, you'll like it. Did that mean you can take time off? Well, yeah. And we're actually using the marionettes from The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, okay. No, okay. <laughs> I'll stop now. Go ahead. Very dark marionettes. <laughs> very dark marionettes. I would say this. Okay. Hang on. <laughs> it's very, very dark. It gets darker. They're really uh, exploring, um, they go yeah. deep. I mean, there's a lot of laughs, but you must buckle your seatbelts because she takes some very interesting turns. Uh, it's, uh, she's examining the prison system as it has never been uh, examined before. Certainly not in our culture in this way. So I think you will be uh, very surprised. I think you will be wholeheartedly engaged, if not riveted. Ah, I correct myself. You will be riveted. <laughs> Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, and Titus, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt, season two. Well, you'll find out Friday. <laughs> <laughs> um, Can't wait. It is as it is funnier, I believe, than than season one. We pick up with the energy that we left off with uh, in season one, and uh, we enter some uh, storylines right away. It's full of heart, and it's oddly extremely touching this season, which is not something I would normally associate with such a zany comedy. Um, but you will be very satisfied. <laughs> because it, it, it was getting darker towards the end of the first season, and there were, there were uh, a bit more emotional moments coming in as well. It's still very, very funny, very, very zany as well, but it's clearly it, it, it lives more in, in, in well, they, they all have uh, storylines of uh, uh, surrounding love, mm -hmm. love interests, and it brings out some very odd things uh, in them. So it's really, for my character in particular, it's really interesting to, to watch him have to consider someone else's feelings before his own. <laughs> uh, 
and a course that is exercised via song. Um, <laughs> is, <laughs> but um, I mean, I shed a little tear when I saw some of the episodes, and I thought, what the hell is this? It is equally funny as it is moving, so it got to be very satiated. And uh, Lorenzo and Michelle, Marco Polo, season two, what can we expect? Well, we, we, you know, we set a world. Uh, the first time someone, a show is showing the East court, the East culture, in that way. So we had the responsibility in season one to introduce the audience to this new world. But now we did it. So now we, we created the box, and now we can have fun in the box. Mm -hmm. So what, what people should expect is an evolution, and, well, Taking on my character, of my character, I would say that, you know, maybe as an origin in black, you will see a lot of the dark sides of each character in the story. Okay. Yeah. And Michelle, uh, we don't know a lot about your character yet. Yeah. Joining the show I as of this joining season. the show. Yeah. I am mysterious. I am dark. I am dangerous. In fact, we never say anything to each other. We just have body language. <laughs> I am the handmaid. Specific body language. Okay. Interesting. So that's what I am. A mysterious dark handmaid. Shrouded hand figure. Yes. Shrouded in mystery. Fantastic. So you, you've all now played these characters multiple times. And Charlie, you said you don't read the script. You read the script as they come along. But how much input do you now have into where your characters go? How much ownership do you feel you have? of these characters as the shows have evolved? Oh, yeah. Uh, good question. I mean, I imagine it's, very, it's different for every show, and you know, it depends how the showrunners, um, how the showrunners work. We, of course, uh, the showrunner from season one, season the night, um, left, and we had two, uh, we had two uh, executive producers, writers from the first season took over. Um, and um, if, are they, uh, I found that the process has been incredibly collaborative. And, you know, I, I read each script, I, I call them up, I ask them questions, I, uh, you know, if I have a few suggestions, they, they, they're very open to that, and it's, it's, I think it's been hands down the, the, the best experience I've had on a, on, a, on a TV show or a film for that matter, is because it, the involvement has felt like it has been uh, a, cap, a collaboration right from the start. Is it the same for everyone else? Do you feel that you own these characters, that you can in, uh, have input into how they, they progress as the series goes along? Uh, <clears throat> I, I certainly feel like I own my character, but I, I work for such thoughtful people who put, who, who, they put a great deal of thought into the world that they create, um, that there is no need to, for improvisation on my show, uh, or, uh, or even suggesting uh, storylines. Um, they were the characters were so fully formed when when we started. If there is something that I take issue with, I certainly bring it up, um, and they listen. But that doesn't happen very often, thank the Lord. All you have to do is talk, and it's funny, and that is that is not common, which is unfortunate. Um, but it, so yeah, it really is. So the answer is yes and no. Yes, I know. Uh, okay, now we have time for some questions from you guys. If you have any uh, questions for our distinguished panel, please raise your hands and we'll get microphones around to you as soon as we possibly can. Please wait for the microphone. Uh, there's a lady right in the middle. Uh, uh, Thank you. Uh, hello, my question is to Camille. Uh, Camille, you have been uh, doing the series for how long? So, Arjun is a new black is going to have three more seasons. So, how is for you? as actress to know that you will have three more years. Or maybe not, it depends on the, what happens to your character. Thank you for that. Thank Thank you. You. She, knows more, she knows more than us. Leave she me knows more than us. Right? You made me happy and then you made me sad. It's, uh, it's delightful. Uh, assuming that my uh, head does not end up on a platter. It's delightful to know that I would have three more seasons, especially one of you've been acting as long as I have. To uh, have that little bit of uh, security is a lousy word, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's a great pleasure, because I love this part. I love this process, and I love Jenji Cohen. I love her brilliance and her mind. But it's great to look forward to more, don't you yes, agree? absolutely. It's great to show up to that set, working with all those amazing women, 
having to go toe to toe with Kate Mulgrew in a, in a scene situation is frightening as hell. Let me just tell you that. It's very scary because Kate brings it, and uh, actually everyone on our set brings it, and we all love each other. So the idea of us doing this for three more years. We all love each other? Oh, we all love each other. Oh, she's so bad. She's so bad. Kate Mulgrew. The vice <laughs> Uh, I think there was a gentleman over here in the fourth row. Can you get a microphone. Keep your hand up, please, sir. Thank you. And there was someone over here as well. Yep, keep your hand up in the fourth row. That gentleman there, right in the middle. And then we'll go to that guy there. Thank you. I have a question for Charlie for Mr. Cox. Uh, we we just spoke, uh, we had the chance to talk about the second season a few months ago. But now I have to ask. They're going to be a season three. Yeah. <laughs> of how the, 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 this season ended, but there is no official word yet. So we don't, we don't know if there's going to be a season three. I certainly don't know. But what we do know is that at the end of this year, we're going to be making The Defenders. Um, and of course, Daredevil is very much a part of that, of that um, foursome. So, yeah, I, I have no idea what the, what the, the storyline is going to be for that show. Um, I'm very excited to see how those worlds combine. You know, uh, they're making Iron Fist as we speak, and so it's going to be very interesting. I'm, I'm fascinated to know, because having watched Jessica Jones and enjoyed it so much, and having heard things about Luke Cage, I'm very interested to know how tonally those shows are going to become one, because they are different now. They feel very different to me. Um, but in terms of wrapping up any storylines, you know, Maybe they'll do some of that in Defenders, maybe they won't. Maybe we'll hopefully get a season three and we'll get to do it. But sadly, I don't know. But when the Defenders come together, Daredevil's the boss, right? He's the leader. You're not going you know, to accept I, anything else. I, I, yeah, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course. Uh, yes, please, over here. Yeah, hello, good morning. Oh, oh, oh sorry, sorry. Uh, I have a question to Charles Cox. Did uh, Marvel approach you? for playing Daredevil in any movies that they have uh, in plans, because, you know, there are many stages, and they just released uh, Spider-Man in one of them, so... Yeah. Uh, but were you approached? No, I mean, you know, when I joined, the, when I signed the contract for this show, I signed multiple years for doing Daredevil, and of course the Defenders, and, it was, and in that package there was the opportunity for me to be involved in the movies in some way. But at this stage, I've, I've not been, there's been no conversations that have been had with me about joining the, uh, um, any of the movies. You know, I, I don't know what the politics are behind it all, but of course Marvel Studios and Marvel TV are, are different. So, uh, um, you know, it'd be great. If that was to happen, it would be wonderful. You know, who wouldn't want to be in the biggest grossing movie of all time? <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, at the, as I sit here, those, none of those discussions have happened. Certainly not with me. Thank you. Good book of things. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, who had the microphone? There was another person here. Yeah, yes, yeah. thank you. Uh, guy here. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, it's the same, the same question for everyone. Can you tell me one favorite series from Netflix? Obviously, you can name your own series. <laughs> one favorite In city. You. Series. 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 Oh, you can't name your own series. Oh. Yes, you can. Oh, you can. Yeah. And you should. Yeah. <laughs> no, let's, let's say you can. Let's all do that. Um, let's just name our own series. You know, with, uh, you know, I'm sitting with some of the greatest shows on television, period, that learn Netflix. Um, but, you know, in, in, in thinking about a show that isn't represented right here today, I, I, I'm personally a huge fan of Bloodline. Me too. I thought that. I, I love it. And as an actor as well, there's, there's some of the work great. those guys are doing is, is, is really stellar. So. I do love it. Yeah. And I love Narcos. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to be on Narcos. Oh. Red. Red makes it onto Narcos. He's delicious. What's his name? Okay. <laughs> no, but isn't he? <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs> Don't you all love Narcos? I'm not alone. I love this, right? you. Great show. Great show. Better shut up. I can um, I I wait for House of Cards like crazy. Yeah. So I really yeah. love House of Cards, and I watch every I watch every season of it. Like I start again at season one and go season one, season two, season three, mm. like that. Oh wow. And, yeah. Okay. I I like it's like the Super Bowl for me. Yes. <laughs> House of Cards comes up. Uh, Titus. Um, I mean, 
It's like saying, what's your favorite song? Yeah. Like, I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's such Sing a... Sing it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> here to stay. No. But it's such a buffet. Like, I, I, there's something that satisfies me about Daredevil, about Orange is really Black. I love House of Cards. I love Narcos. So I don't know that I have a favorite, except that whatever I'm in the mood for, I go and get it. <laughs> uh, Michelle. Well, at the present moment, I am having terrible withdrawal symptoms because I have been filming in China. Uh -huh. So I haven't had my Netflix fix for a while. So hopefully over the next two nights while I'm here, it will be a non-stop binge. I have promised you that. Uh, it's like, how do you name your favorite toy? You know? Yeah. It's just so diversified, and I'm really, really glad finally someone's making a historical drama about China with Marco Polo. Yes. So that is very high on my list yeah. simply because of that. Sure. Uh, but the rest that. of the time, it's like, you know, whatever the mood goes, and I just sit there, and when I'm not in front of the TV, I carry my laptop to the bath. <laughs> so that could be dangerous. That could be dangerous. Yeah. It, no, 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 no. I have a little stool, a wave, so it doesn't tip into the bath. Oh, you are <laughs> really hard. Yeah. Do you have a little music stand for your iPad next to your totally. bath? Totally. <laughs> you have it all sussed out. It's a bathroom of the future. They're all going to have it. They're Watching all going to have Marcos a little laptop, in the bath, little iPad, yeah. place. Yeah. And and exactly. Don't and miss it. It's a mirror. It's a mirror. It turns into a TV. <laughs> and it goes back. Genius. Uh, Lorenzo, your favorite? Uh, I, uh, you know, I have to go for Narcos. Okay. Right, I'm, I'm Latin, yeah. so I'm, <laughs> I'm on that. I think we've got time for maybe one or two last questions. Uh, if anyone would like to put their hands up. Yes, please. All right. Uh, it's a question for Lorenzo. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, how challenging it was for you as a non-speaking English actor, Italian actor, to get on a project than an English project? Oh. Very difficult. No, it was, 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 was the biggest, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Because uh, when you step into a set and you don't know English and you're supposed to act in English, the main thing of acting is relating with your memories. So when I have to say I love you on a scene, I do think all the time I said I love you in my own life. But if you've never experienced that in English, that was the trick. Uh, I had amazing people around me. And don't you think it's crazy that they took me not speaking English? I basically, as you can imagine, I was in the middle of set, the director and all the people were speaking to me, and I was like, <laughs> can you please say again? They came again, and I was not speaking, because they were not, I mean, on set, you're not like, the perfect school English. They're like, I was, I was, I was, I was in the middle of it, so it was crazy. Uh, the good thing about it is that people, at that moment, I'm talking about season one, of course season two was better, and season one, people was uh, communicating with me with body language. <laughs> all like this, all like this. So I'm Did so... you have a translator? Oh. You didn't? They didn't want me to get a translator. They didn't want me to, to read in Italian. I was forced to read everything in English. So I had to like set up and I was like, guys, you're, you're teaching me English and I'm in a set with New Zealand guys, Irish guys, English guys. I will never get an accent. I don't understand nothing. Uh. Uh, so you just learned to speak this language? Last year, yeah. How beautiful. It's amazing. Are you serious? Yeah. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. Uh, I did not understand anything. Well, 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 okay. I have to say now something. Uh, I'm forced to, do, to say something. <laughs> My mother uh, was, because now it's finished, it was an, an English teacher, but I, I was that. the worst student ever. <laughs> so it's something that probably was like inside of me. I didn't know how to do it, but then I did it. Uh, what happened to me, since I'm the only Italian guy in a big show like this, and you don't find many Europeans guys my age being here at this level, I'm experiencing, I'm trying to hold the flag of all my buddies home, my actors home, and um, I really hope that this is going to be a step up for Europeans to have a lead role in big production. So I really hope so. And the kind of experience I had, the same you would have there. So 
and go over that. Amazing. Okay. Absolutely amazing. Uh, I think we've got time for one last question. Who is it going to be? This lady over here. Thank you. Right beside you. Yes. Hi, uh, I'm Marlene from Norway. Uh, I wonder, have you seen Lillehammer with uh, Stephen Hansen? Oh, yes. And what do you think about Norway? <laughs> if you have watched it. It's the most beautiful place. Really? Good, good, good. Yeah, seriously. But have you watched it? I've worked up in um, uh, Long, uh, Long Eben, in Tromso. Yeah. So yes. Yes, I was living in an icebreaker for about six weeks. It is the most spectacular place on earth. So you haven't watched the Hammer? Lily Hammer. Lily Hammer. With Stephen Thompson from. You love Lily Hammer, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> I love yeah. Lily Hammer. Okay, I binge watch should... every season. I loved Lily Hammer. Yeah. Really funny and quirky. I would go for Lily Hammer as my favorite show. It's actually the first yeah. show I saw on Netflix. Because yeah. I didn't know Netflix yeah, before, yeah. and one of the first shows was Lily it Hammer. Was, yeah. And it was all in, in, in Norwegian. Norwegian. Yeah. So it's yes. amazing how the people yeah. reacted, and even if it was in Norwegian, they loved it. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah, you really, really love Norway. Norway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I'm not working, I'm in front of the TV watching yeah. Netflix pretty so, much. Do you binge watch 13 episodes in a row? Or how oh, do you, do you yeah. Break three I mean, that's too hot. I think we all do that. 13 in a row? Oh, I, I'll look at my watch. It's like, it's only 5 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I can get another episode in. You know, it's yeah. bad. It's yeah. bad. If I'm not working, it's, it's Netflix and chill. <laughs> Okay, uh, thank you so much for your questions. Um, of course, we've, we've had a second season of Marvel Daredevil, and we've got uh, days confirmed for a regular location at season two, and Orange is the New Black, season four. Uh, but Renzo, when can we clap our eyes on the next season of Marco Polo? Are we saying this now? We're saying it now. Do you think they want to know it? Do you want to know? Yeah, I do want to know. The, the reaction was that. It was, it was lukewarm at best. Like, no. I want to know. Do you want to know when the next season of Marco Polo launches on Netflix? That's my question. Season 2 uh, of Marco Polo Season 2 is going to be streaming on Netflix. What's that? <laughs> July 1st. July 1st. Woo! Woo oh, Marco Polo Season 2. There we go. You're the first people to know that. Absolutely. Be happy. Look at that, massive behind us. Uh, it's fantastic news. Very excited to see season two with Michelle as a oh, yes. curious, dark handmaid. You want to know more about your character, that's for sure. Uh, and I want to thank our panel uh, for joining us today, and I want to thank you guys for joining us as well. Please join me in thanking our amazing guests. Charlie Cox, Mia Delario, Ken Audrey, Adam Spurgis, Michelle Gill, and Lorenzo Michelle. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you guys. Thank you. It helps. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Keep your pause going, people.